How is it annoying to see a spinner and the application takes forever to load? Performance is crucial in user experience and slow loading data can really hold an app back. That's why today I'll be exploring one of the tools to enhance the data fetching and data loading. It's called GraphQL. Do we have a pointer? This works, right? It should work like that. Oh, oh, I have. Uh, <laughs> you have download? Sorry, technical issues. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't have a. Ah, see. Yeah. I oh. think this should work. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Is it the shift? I'm just pressing it, I don't know. Yeah. You know, because never mind. Okay. Never mind, I will just use will my, uh, my keyboard. It's okay. And it works. There you go. All right. <laughs> Thanks. So today I'm presenting, again, the power of GraphQL. So we're going to explore the powerful capabilities of this tool and how, it can, how we can use it for API and modern application. But before I do that, quick introduction about myself, and it's not working again. <laughs> All right. Quick introduction about myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Yara Debian. I'm Lebanese. I currently live in Barcelona, and I'm a software engineer at Factorial. So before I start about talking about GraphQL, I'm just going to go over real quick REST API. We all know about REST API, REST API, and it's like the go-to solution when you're dealing with data uh, fetching and data manipulation. But with REST API, we can have some problems. One of them is the underfetching. And underfetching is when I'm requesting data, and to get all my data, I need to have more than one REST API request because I'm not getting enough for one request. Also, we have the problem of overfetching, which is actually the opposite. It's when I get more data than I actually need in my request. So all of this can result in this slow loading data in the appearance of spinners, and we hate spinners in our application, and the reduced responsiveness of the web application, and overall the usability of the application, it undermines it. So let's try to solve this question, to solve this pain with GraphQL. First, what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a, is a API query tool uh, okay, I found this on the web for Izzy Izzy. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's my friend Siri. <laughs> Siri, shut up. <laughs> All right. So GraphQL is an API query language, and it has a three main pillars. The first one is the single request property. And what do I mean by that? I mean that we can have all the data that you need in one single request. And we're going to see later how we can do that. The second, the second one is the easy data manipulation. And the GraphQL supports a precise and simple data fetching. And the last one is the strongly typed schema. And when I say strongly typed schema, we can think about it as a contract. It's a strict contract between the server and the client. So more about the schema. Here in my diagram, I have the schema that's defined. And inside my schema, I have all the logic, everything I need to know for my application. I have the objects, I have the, um, the models that I want. I also define the operations that I can do on my data. So the query, the mutation, everything. So what happens is the front end and or the client, it requests some data or it wants to manipulate some data. So it talks to the back end or the service. And what happens is the server need to check with the schema, which has the contract with it, and to see what kind of operations are allowed and what kind of types are defined and everything. So everything happens inside the schema and the DB is there just to provide the data or to execute some manipulation, some, uh, some mutations for the data. Now, what is a schema and how we construct it? We need to understand something, which is the types. We have four main types in GraphQL. The first one is the scalar, which are the basic types. They can be integers, string, boolean. The second one, is when I don't have the types already predefined in GraphQL, I construct something called custom scalars. 
and this is used to express some date or time variables. The last one, the third one, is the enumerators, which is when I have a discrete set of choices that I want to express, and I know what output I am expecting. For example, to define a role, I can define the role being an admin, or a guest, or a default, or a manager. I know what kind of output I'm getting. And the last one is the object. And the object is actually a combination of all the previous types and also of some objects. They're the complex data structure that when we see, we can actually understand. The last thing that I want to talk about is the query. And from the name of the query, what is query is a function that used to request and fetch data from the GraphQL API. It's a really cool thing about the query is that, sh shut up, Siri. <laughs> The cool thing about query is that uh, it helps me define what I want, and it helps me to get the exact data that I need. So the thing here in this really simple query, I'm defining what I want as a response. So here I'm trying, for example, to get a post, and the <coughs> query takes an argument as any function. Here I'm, get, I'm taking an ID, and I need the post to return the ID, the title, and the author attribute, for example. So everything is defined by the developers, and I don't have any surprises from the back end from what I'm getting, because I'm defining what I need. So it makes, yeah, it makes the API more efficient and more flexible for the developer. So I'm gonna let that sink in for two seconds. And now that you have enough basic knowledge on the GraphQL and how, how things work, I'm gonna jump to a quick demo. Suppose I have this web log application. I know, <laughs> design is my passion. <laughs> so I have a user, I have some posts, and I have a friends list. Now suppose I wanna render this page, what I will need is three requests. First one to get the user, the second one is to get the post, and the last one is to get the list of friends. Okay, so now suppose I wanna take my application to the next level, and I wanna have this kind of like a pop over or a tool tip or something. And inside it, I will be also displaying some information about the author of every post. So I will need three additional requests to get the user information. So that's all, it's more than four requests just to get this simple page. So imagine the amount of spinners I will be having now. That's crazy and we hate that, we hate spinners. <laughs> so let's try to solve this with the GraphQL. First, what I will do, I will start with my schema just to understand how things are are done. I have a user. I define the user attributes that I have, ID, name, email, whatever. And I also have posts that the user can see or that they, they belong to the user. And what is a post is actually another, another object. Inside the post, I also define the attributes and the post has an author. What is the author is actually a user. And lastly, also inside the user, I have a friends list. And what is a friend is also a user. So now we see how things are connected together. Now that I constructed my schema, I'm gonna try to construct my first query. And what is this query doing? This query will try to fetch the, the, the page that I, to render the page that I have. And inside my query, what I have, I have my argument, I have my ID, and again, I'm defining what I want. I'm telling the client, the client is telling the server what it needs. So I'm telling here for the user, I need the user attributes, I need a list of posts, and I need a list of friends of this user. So all of this is being done with just one request, which is slash GraphQL. So no more underfetching here. I don't need more requests just to get one simple data that I have. It's as simple as that. This is how my output would look like. Strict, basic JSON format output. I have all my information. I have an array of posts, I have an array of friends. As simple as that. Now one more thing. Imagine I decide in my application that I don't wanna show the email anymore. I don't care about the email and I don't need, it to, I don't need to render it. So basically with REST API, I will have to accept it because this is my request to get a user. So what the backend is giving me, I'm gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna have to parse it and do all the logic there. Or I'm gonna have to change the logic in the backend. But with GraphQL, all I can do is just remove my email. I don't need it here. And this is how my output would look like. No email, no overload of data, no like load of transfer, so no more overfetching here. I'm getting exactly what I need. So yeah, 
I'm gonna go just one, take a quick look again on my application. And if we look again, we can see that we have something common here. We, we have some common fields. They are all a user. And if I take a look again at my query, I can see that inside my query, I'm repeating myself here. I'm repeating the attributes again and again, and we hide repetition. And I think most of us are lazy when it comes to rewriting the thing over and over again. So what if we had a way to connect everything and just to group everything in one single query? And this query is gonna, every time I'm gonna call it, it's gonna just give me the information of a user instead of me repeating myself. Well, that's possible. It's possible with something called fragment. And what is a fragment? The way, the only way, or the simplest way to think about fragment is like an abstraction. And it's like it's extracting data from a query, extracting a subquery. And I can reuse it everywhere, like a puzzle piece. And I can reuse it in every query. And every time I'm using it, I know what it's going to get me. And I, I know the type it's going to get me. So for example here, because I have the type user, I can construct a query called user fragment. And every time I will be calling this fragment, it's going to get me the ID, the name, and the email. So this is how my query would look like again. I would be just calling the fragment in both places, for the user and for the friends. Now the also cool part about it is that it makes my code more maintainable and more modular. Why? Suppose I decide to make my application even more sophisticated, and I wanted to add the bio attribute here. Now, if I had the old query there, I would have to go to everywhere I'm calling the user and call the bio again. So, but with fragment, I can just add it here. And the bio will be requested everywhere I'm going, calling the fragment. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, everything I just explained and I went over can be possible or it's kind of a bit complicated to do without Apollo client. And Apollo client is a simple library that's used to integrate GraphQL with our front end, front end projects, with uh, React, Angular, or any other framework that we're working on. And it provides caching capabilities and it makes it easy for developers to use GraphQL. I'm gonna combine everything that we did. It's just simple JavaScript file. Um, I'm sure if, if I'm gonna run this, it's gonna fail, but it's pretty basic to understand how things are connected. So I'm using my Apollo client here, and I'm importing my use query method here. And I'm gonna use this query to actually call the query that I constructed. So I have here my query that I constructed before. I'm not gonna put it here, the get user query. And what I'm doing, for example here, I'm defining a user profile component, and inside it, I'm calling the use query from Apollo. I'm passing to it my constructed query before, and also the argument, which is the variable, which is here the user ID. And what it's returning? It's returning loading, which is a Boolean value, to know if that actually it's loading or not, to know if I'm gonna display the spinner or not, the only spinner, and the error field, and also the data. So this is how it's gonna look like. I have the user, for example, I can define it, and I can be able to use it in my component, user.name, .friends, .post, everything that I'm actually returning in my query. Yeah, pretty cool. And there is more. I haven't even scratched the surface of GraphQL. We still have the mutation. I, it's enough, 15 minutes is not enough to talk about that. We also have the pagination, which is used for extensive data, and the other handling, as seen before, it's here because the, the GraphQL, it dedicates just a field for, that, for the errors in every response. So it's so easy to handle it and to parse it and all of this. So yeah, I really hi I highly uh, request or advise you to, uh, to check GraphQL. It's really interesting tool to have and it can take really like API management and data management to the next level. And to check that, there are a lot of tutorials online, a lot of documentation. One of them is the official documentation for GraphQL and the official documentation for Apollo as well. And there are a lot of free uh, resources on the internet to check. Last but not least, I just wanna go over some real life use cases of GraphQL, starting by Facebook, which is, I forgot to mention, is the uh, creator of GraphQL. And uh, Facebook is using it for the Instagram application. 
Also, we have, uh, we have GitHub that's using GraphQL to construct the, their public API. We have Twitter using GraphQL for their uh, Twitter Lite application. And Twitter Lite is the application used for a slow connection environment. So they're trying to make the application more performance and requires less, uh, less rendering. So this is great when they try to escape the overfetching and un underfetching in Rust. And lastly, also, Airbnb is using it for, uh, to unify all the API in one. And it makes it easy for developers to maintain Airbnb application. So yeah, we can see that GraphQL has made a huge impact in the tech industry. And let's try together to unlock the power of GraphQL. Thank you. What time? Any questions for your Yeah. Hi. Hi. How do you validate the query according to the schema? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. How do you validate the query according to the schema? I don't, but the schema you, does it you itself. It's, it's Apollo, it's the integration with Apollo that validates everything. That's the thing, I pass only my arguments to it and the schema is how it's defined because I'm defining in my schema my user type, for example, and I'm defining the user type is always, like the ID is always an integer. And I don't know, the name is a string or the date is, has this format. So every time I'm sending a request to my, with my Apollo client, it's gonna check this query, okay? It's gonna check what kind of type I'm passing, for example, and it's gonna return it for me. And if anything is not matching, it's gonna throw the error by itself. Is it possible to return a partial response for the request for the query? Partial response for the query. It depends what I'm sending. This is the thing. I, I define in my query what I need. So if I need a partial response, I just need to tell it I need it partial. So I only define it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.